Hey there. So today I'm going to talk about how to write a research statement for a postdoc fellowship application. So I know I've been kind of focusing on the how to PhD part of uh, grad school, like how do you actually get through grad school and deal with various challenges and actually successfully graduate. But then one of my most popular posts on my blog, howtophd.org, is actually this one, the one about the research statement for a postdoc fellowship. So this actually has also encouraged me to write a whole book on how to successfully apply to postdocs, and that should be coming out really soon, uh, in fact, this month. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm going to get right to it. So I just want to give you the background that when I was in grad school and applying to uh, postdocs, um, I was still like very much in the thick of things with graduate school. I was still like working on my research and working on papers and um, uh, it was a lot of work to then also apply to uh, postdocs and but then that's all I knew how to do. So even though I didn't ultimately go on to do a postdoc, I applied to postdocs and I got postdocs and I was successful with those applications, whether getting interviews or then getting offers. So you know there is a story there. There is some there is there are things I learned that I want to share with you, and this is part of that um, because I realized how much work it was and that if I can kind of help you streamline this process of applying to postdocs while you're still in graduate school or still doing whatever you're doing that's taking up a lot of your time on top of everything, doing postdoc applications is a lot of stress and a lot of, uh, extra work. It's almost like having another job. Uh, so any help I can provide with this, I would be happy to do that, and that's what I'm here for. So in this uh, particular episode, I want to share with you the research statement that I wrote to become a finalist in a uh, very prestigious, I would say, postdoctoral fellowship competition called the Owen Chamberlain Postdoctoral Fellowship at Berkeley Lab. So you've probably heard of Berkeley Lab, Lawrence uh, yeah, Berkeley National Lab, um, which is, you know, kind of like up the hill from uh, University of Berkeley, uh, you know, in the, in the it, you know, obviously Berkeley near San Francisco area. So that's where, that's where this was. Um, I applied for that competition. And uh, so they, so they literally call this a competition because a lot of people apply for this kind of fellowship. So this is a so, the, you know, there's normal postdocs, like where you get a postdoctoral opportunity with some professor and that's all good. And then there's slightly more glorified versions of postdocs, which is the postdoctoral fellowship, which sometimes it's like named after someone famous and it's kind of like a bigger competition. Um, and then there may be some finalists who are then interviewed and they come in and they go through the process and it's a bit, it's a, it's a lot more competitive to get into one of these. Um, so I wanted to share this experience with you because I thought that was pretty special that I got chosen uh, to um, go interview for this postdoctoral fellowship. Like I applied online and I applied pretty cold. Like I did all the steps for application, you know, writing a research statement, getting the recommendation letters, but like, it's not like I, I knew anyone, you know, on the committee or like at Berkeley. I didn't really have any connections at all. So it was a pretty cold application. Um, and I was selected as a finalist out of, so I think it's only a few people that get selected out of hundreds. So I thought that, that this would be a worthwhile experience to share with you. So at the time of this application, like when I'm applying, I think it was around October, November of 2017 uh, to then, because I was expecting to graduate uh, in, in that following year. So then this fellowship would have started in the following year. So like 2018, it would have started. Um, so I am in grad school, very much in the thick of things in grad school in 2017, October, November, when I'm applying right? And just because of the nature of research and how long everything takes and um, 
papers take a long time. I actually, at the time, at the time of the application, I did not have any main author papers published yet, right? I didn't have anything published yet, but some in the pipeline. So I just want to stress this point because, you know, when you're applying to postdocs and postdoctoral fellowships, you might think, oh my God, I don't have any main author papers uh, published yet. So like, should I even bother applying? Like, am I going to get selected? Well, I wanted to share this experience where I didn't have any main author papers published and I applied and I did get selected as a finalist. So uh, there you have it. So then if you're wondering, like, I know what the big question is as far as uh, how to write a research statement, right? Like if you've never done one before, if you're if you're new at this, like I was and haven't had the experience of applying to a lot of postdocs or any postdocs, you might be wondering, what do you even write in a research statement? Like what is a research statement? What do you do? What do you write in it? And I'm totally with you. I felt the same way. I was like, what do I even say? Um, like, what do I write? You know, I'm going, I'm applying to a postdoctoral fellowship position at this big lab. And of course, they do a lot of cool things there and getting an opportunity to work there would be awesome. So like, what would I, what do I even say about um, what I would want to do there in this research statement while I'm in the middle of graduate school? Um so if you're wondering the same way, uh, the same thing, what I learned is that what you mainly say in a research statement is what you have done already and how that makes you great. So when I learned this, that was a big relief for me because it's not like I have to project a lot of things about the future. I can talk about what I've done already and that's in the past that's things that you know already that you've done. So talking about the things that you've done already is much, much easier than like making predictions or proposals for the future, right? And so um, that I think this is a very good thing to know that you mainly have to talk about what you've done already. And then the next very important part is how that makes you great. So you can't forget about that part um, but those are the things to keep in mind. So I don't know exactly how many people apply for postdoc fellowships like these, but like, as I was saying, I think it's hundreds. So I was selected as a finalist along with four or five others. And I realized like how many people were finalists by looking at the schedule for, um, the interview talks. So like basically at Berkeley, if you get selected as a finalist for this postdoctoral fellowship, you have to give a talk and that appears on their website. And I could kind of see who else was also scheduled to give a talk and kind of got an idea that it was like four or five total people. Um, and you know, I ended up visiting, uh, Berkeley lab and it was great. It was a lot of fun visiting, and interviewing and giving talks. And I'm going to, um, like I gave one main talk about, uh, my research that, you know, that was like the main big, uh, job talk that I, uh, that I'm going to talk about in my book. Um, but then there were a lot of little talks too, like little talks given to smaller groups of people. Cause you're getting to know that group or discussing about your work and you might have to go up to the board and, uh, you know, draw things and write things out and basically do more like smaller presentations. So there is one big presentation that you uh, prepare, but then there's a bunch of like, like smaller ones and a lot of different little discussions. Like the interviewing process like never really ends. Like even when you go to lunch with a group, you're still interviewing, you're still talking about work and, you know, it's pretty exhausting, but it was a lot of fun. I really, really appreciated this experience of interviewing, interviewing at Berkeley lab. Um, but you know, uh, just so you're prepared for some of the things that go on at the interview, they told me that they did not yet know their budget for that coming year. So this is kind of has to do with how the government, um, you know, decides about funding for different labs and how labs end up getting money. But basically when they started, uh, sending out 
the the competition information and when they started to interview they actually didn't even know whether they would have money to uh give anyone this fellowship and and then what happened was they ended up not giving the fellowship to anyone that following year as far as i know because once again since this is a uh competition the finalists all that information is public like you can go to their website and look up like who was finalized to give a job talk who got the fellowship like who won the competition all of that information comes up on their website and when i checked they had actually given the fellowship to no one so you know i mean i got selected as a finalist that was a big deal i got to interview and and i can basically i i live that uh tale to be able to tell the story to you now uh and then i did not end up going there for this postdoc because they did not make an offer because they actually did not make an offer to anyone. So, you know, that happens too, I guess. Uh, but I thought that my interviews went really well. And of course, as far as this research statement is concerned that I share here on the blog, and I'm going to go through it in this uh, podcast episode as well. Uh, well, it must have been good enough because based on this research statement, I got the interview call. So like, I love this experience of interviewing and I share with you my research statement that made me a finalist for the Chamberlain Fellowship at Berkeley Lab. So I'm just going to go over this, the research statement that I wrote to give you a further, like I already told you that basically you have to talk about what you've already done, but then I want to actually go through the research statement so you know for sure what I'm saying here. So I, I actually really share this research statement, like word for word, like the thing that I um, submitted to the postdoc fellowship competition. I share this on my website, howtophd.org. So if you go there and um, you know click on the link for this post, you can read this research statement and you can reverse engineer it or change it to to you know. For your own research statement, if you're if you're doing uh, an application yourself, so just to give you an idea, like how it works, you can totally use this research statement from the website, from this blog, uh, for your own research statement. You can use it as a template. Um, I really want this to be as helpful as possible for you, so that's what that's what I'm going to point out here, um, and I'm going to link to this uh, blog post, which has this research statement template uh, in this podcast episode, or or you can go to the uh, website, howtophd.org, and search for just the words research statement on the search bar, and you'll see it, um, you know. So just, just making sure that you know that this option is there for you to just like, I don't know, copy my research statement and then change it for your own work. So... All right. So what I do is how I start my research statement. So the first line is multi-messenger astronomy and astrophysics, although broad, although broad, capture my research interests most accurately. So I kind of start with this line saying multi-messenger astronomy and astrophysics, although broad, capture my research interests most accurately. So this line is is very important because I am focusing the reader's attention to the part of physics, to the part of science that I'm interested in right away. Like I'm not going to beat around the bush about what my research interest is. And with this, I also want to point out that when you get to the point of applying to postdocs, although it's okay to be pretty broad when you go for your PhD, when you go for your postdoc, it's not cute anymore to kind of not know what you want to do. At that point, people expect you to have a pretty good understanding of what interests you, what you're passionate about. So it can be broad, but it also has to be kind of narrow. So like for me, multi-messenger astronomy and astrophysics, that is really broad. But at the same time, it kind of helps to orient the reader immediately on um, that multi-messenger part and the astronomy and astrophysics. Those words those mean something in that field and that really helps to orient the focus of the reader immediately to um 
that sort of research interest rather than like I could have put it some I could have said something else like I could have said oh I you know particle physics doing this and that help is what I am interested in but I didn't say that because broadly really truthfully what I was interested in is multi-messenger astronomy and astrophysics the fact that you can do you can study the universe you can do astronomy and astrophysics with different types of messengers different types of astrophysical messengers that does interest me the most and I was honest about it right in my first line so you want to do something like that with your interest whatever it is that you are interested in the best words you can find to describe that the most succinctly you want to put that in your first uh, sentence of your research statement so then I go on to kind of explain so like once you start with a strong statement like that, like, this is what I'm interested in, then, of course, you want to say a few more sentences to uh, describe a little bit more detail, like, what you mean, right? But you want to start with that strong statement. Very first line. I want you to have this in your very first line. Start with a strong statement about what interests you and then give a little bit of description. And that's your first paragraph. So if you're looking at the blog post, I have one, two three, four, five, six paragraphs, right? And I'm on the first paragraph right now with you here. So I say, multi-messenger astronomy and astrophysics, although broad, capture my research interests most accurately. Be it neutrinos, x-rays, dark matter, or gravitational waves, I find these rapidly growing avenues of studying the universe most promising, and the Chamberlain Fellowship would allow me to expand on my current expertise while applying the knowledge, skills, and experience gained during my PhD. So I hope you saw what I did there. I basically told them what my research interest is, gave another sentence about a little bit more description of what that interest is, um, because, you know, multi-messenger astronomy and astrophysics. So I mentioned like neutrinos, x-rays, dark matter, gravitation, gravitational waves. And I basically said that I find these rapidly growing. You want to say something like that so that because you want to be on the ra- on the cutting edge of whatever that interest is, right? So like basically multi-messenger astronomy, uh, doing that with neutrinos, x-rays, dark matter, that's like being on the cutting edge of that field. So I'm saying that I find that interesting, that that's what I want to do, um, and that the Chamberlain Fellowship, so whatever fellowship you're applying for, would allow me to do that. Um, so you want to say what your interest is, you want to give a little bit more description about what that interest is, and then you want to connect the fellowship you're applying to right in that same paragraph to put everything together and say, hey, this is my interest. I think I can do this with this fellowship. Uh, and everything I've done during my PhD, my knowledge, whatever skills, expertise can will help me do that. So you're saying all of that. So like you're saying what you want, how you can do it, with this fellowship, that you can do it with this fellowship, and how how you are prepared to, in the shortest possible, in the most like sort of summary sort of way, in the very first paragraph. Okay, so this very quickly makes a case for what you want to do. It tells them what you want to do, and it makes a case for what you want to do right in the first paragraph. You don't want to give a lot of information without first telling them what you want and you don't want to give them a lot of information without telling them that you can do the thing that you're asking to do so like you know what I mean this is sort of the kind of like template the format you want to follow for that first paragraph all right then now that you have piqued their interest with like boom what do you want to do and why and how you want to give them more description of how you're set up to be able to do that. So the second paragraph, I'm getting into more detail of my PhD because I just told them that my PhD experience helps me uh, to be able to do th- to be able to do this stuff that I just said. So how does my PhD experience then help me? What was my PhD experience? So in the second paragraph, I say. My PhD is focused on a NASA long duration balloon experiment for ultra high energy neutrino detection called the Antarctic Impulsive Transit Antenna, or ANIDA. ANIDA uses the polar vortex to orbit in roughly circular trajectories at an altitude of around 40 kilometers over the continent of Antarctica for about a month during the austral summer. 
This experiment provides a unique opportunity to study high-energy astrophysical phenomena by means of an emerging cosmic messenger, namely the neutrino. There have been four Anita missions so far. So that was my second paragraph. So it like this second paragraph, you want it to be filled with sort of like a summary of your experiment or your work and sort of like highlights of what it is that you do for your PhD or your current research project in the most like understandable way possible. Like you don't want to use too many big words. You don't want to get into the detail, detail of what you do. You want to give a high level. This is the coolest thing ever kind of thing that I do. Giving all the highlights that make it stand out. Right? So you want to give enough highlights of what you do that they continue to remain interested in what you did. That makes you so great. But you don't want to get into so much detail that then they lose you and they don't understand what you do and then they stop reading. Okay? So don't get into too much detail, but get into enough that makes it sound freaking awesome. Okay? That's your second paragraph. And see, you're already writing about things that you've done already and, and that's easy, right? You just have to understand how to organize that information at this point. So that's the second paragraph for me. And then third paragraph, I get into a little bit more detail, right, um, about the same experiment. So I say, Anita searches for radio pulses in the 200 to 1200 megahertz frequency range produced by neutrino interactions in the Antarctic ice. Um, the, the human activity that produces radio waves in the same frequency range, such as military communication satellites, has been known to interfere with and even prevent Anita science operations. To mitigate radio interference, I built tunable filters for the Anita 4 mission in 2016. During my deployment in Antarctica last year, after a successful launch of Anita 4, I operated the tunable filters in real time. The filters helped to increase the instrument lifetime of Anita by almost a factor of three. Details are in our preprint at then I have the archive link to that paper. So this again, this third paragraph and the information I just provided again, very important because now you've given a little bit more information about your research project as well as talked about a big impact that you made to uh, your research project. So like I talk about how I went to Antarctica, that's pretty cool, right? The filters that I worked on helped to increase the instrument lifetime of Anita by almost a factor of three. That's a big impact. In experiments, it's very important to have more lifetime rather than less lifetime. Um, so that's super important. And I mentioned that I have a paper, but it's a preprint. So see how I didn't have a main author paper published, published, but I had a preprint. Like I already was working on this paper. It was going to be a paper eventually, and there's no reason not to link to the preprint version of it. So I had this paper on archive, and I wanted to give the link to that, and, and that's very important. This is what you should be doing as well. If you don't have the paper published in a journal yet, if you put it in a, a preprint uh, publication thing like archive, you can still link to the, like, give the, the link of that paper even if it's a preprint, it still counts for something. It it counts for a lot, actually. It means that you have a paper in progress. That's basically like freaking great, you know. So don't shy away from uh, from sharing links to your preprints if you have those. And yeah, like I said, third paragraph, it gives a little bit more information about uh, on what you've done. And now you're getting into the big impact that you've made. You start. You want to start talking about impact in the middle of your research statement, what impact you've made, because realizing that making an impact, first of all, is very important. Realizing that you have to make an impact is very important. And the fact that you appreciate making an impact, that you've made an impact and you're ready to make more impact, all of that is great to um, be able to communicate. And then uh, here you're not only saying about what you've done and you're connecting that to the impact part. So both of those are super important. Um, and then, so this is 
so the third paragraph, I kind of talked about some stuff that I had done in the past. So what am I doing in the present, right? You also want to say what's kind of going on right now, because like in research, everything is always freaking ongoing. So like, are are you still current? Like, are you still currently doing something great as well? So you want to kind of do that in your fourth paragraph. So I have in my fourth paragraph that at present. I'm studying and classifying anthropogenic noise using data from the Anita 2 and Anita 3 flights. I'm a lead contributor to the development of a new analysis technique to search for a diffuse flux of ultra-high energy neutrinos. Additionally, I'm leading the development of new techniques to perform the first search for afterglow neutrinos from gamma ray bursts using data from the Anita 3 and Anita 4 flights. We are expecting to publish results from these analyses at the end of the fall of 2017 and in the spring of 2018, respectively. That's the third paragraph for me. So basically, in this paragraph, I gave them information about what I'm doing right now and then about how those publications, the timeline. Basically, you're kind of telling them more about all the awesome things you're still doing currently, like you're totally current, and how the stuff you're doing now will also result in publications. Because, you know, I mean, publications are important in science. Like, as a postdoc, you're expected to publish. You have to be like a paper factory. So showing that you already have publications, you're working on more, all of that is great. And also, it kind of gives gives them an idea for your timeline of finishing things up. That's also important. Like, if they... The thing is, I was doing my PhD and applying for a postdoc fellowship. Well, to get the postdoc fellowship, I needed my PhD to be over. So like you need to have some plan for how you're going to how you're going to wrap up your research, your current research and your current PhD um, tasks so that then, you know, they have an idea for the timeline for when you're finishing up so that they can decide whether you are going to be ready to be awarded this fellowship or not, you know, in the timeline that they're looking at. So now that you've said some stuff about what you have been doing, what you did and what you do now and how that connects to publications and how it's great impact, now you want to get into focusing on um, them, on the postdoc fellowship and what you will do when you get the postdoc fellowship, right? And how it connects with what you've already done and how what you've already done makes you great for these things that you're saying you're interested in. So this is my fourth paragraph. I said, I'm interested in experiments such as Dia Bay and Dune that probe the universe with neutrinos at energies complementary to those probed by Anita. These experiments will allow me to increase my breadth, both in their particle physics and astrophysics goals. Additionally, I'm interested in the next generation dark matter experiment, LZ, that aims to answer fundamental questions about the universe through the detection of dark matter. So you can see how I'm mentioning work that I'm interested in that both have some connection, complementary by nature maybe, but some connection to what I've done already and also is consistent with what I said in my very first paragraph where I said I was interested in multi-messenger astronomy and astrophysics. So you want everything to tie together nicely and be all consistent. So you're saying, and that's how you're making, you're building your case, right? Everything has to make sense. Everything you say, the the thing you say that you want to do has to connect with what you've already done. Even if it doesn't directly connect, you have to find some connection. And that's your job, right? As with writing this research statement, it is your job to present everything in a way that just ties together. So I'm saying, I'm mentioning, I'm saying names of experiments that are complementary to those uh, probed by Anita, the, to, the, to the experiment I did for my PhD. So it's like, okay, I did this for my PhD. I want to do this other thing, which uh, would be a complementary thing to do um, as far as the science it would probe Uh, that Anita was doing, right? So it's kind of like increasing my expertise, it'll increase my breath, um, and it will still be consistent with my goals in particle physics and astrophysics. So that's this paragraph. And then 
I'm getting into the the last paragraph now. Um, so I just mentioned about specific experiments at the specific organization where I'm applying for this postdoc fellowship. So of course, this this paragraph. So in the last paragraph of your research statement, you really want to bring everything together that you've been talking about. You've been talking about how uh, the things you've done for your PhD, how that makes you great for the things you want to do and how everything is aligned. And so this is the you know grand finish. So this is a little bit of a longer paragraph for me. And you, know, you can take this template and do something similar. So what I say here is, Due to my experience with building and deploying Anita 4, I am well-placed to make strong con contributions to detector development, testing, calibration, and de deployment for new and upcoming experiments. By the time I graduate, I will have worked on multiple analyses using complementary techniques involving data from three flights of Anita, making me well-rounded and capable of leading analysis projects for the above-mentioned experiments. In conclusion, my research interests align with multiple opportunities that could be supported by the Chamberlain Fellowship and that would also benefit from my background in particle astrophysics instrumentation and analysis work. And that's the end of the research statement for me. That, that was my last paragraph. And you can see how I've kind of summarized all the things kind of using different wording, but I've summarized the stuff that I've already done during my PhD, how that makes me a strong candidate for the opportunities that would be uh, available from this fellowship and how everything is aligned. So the big phrases to use here that you want to definitely use for your stuff is, uh, I say something like, I am well-placed to make strong contributions. You want to have something like that in this ending paragraph, because that just kind of Bring home brings home the point that whatever you have done so far in your life, in your PhD or whatever other research project, makes you well placed to make strong contributions to blah blah blah. So whatever blah 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 you have done makes you a well makes you well placed to make strong contributions to the next blah 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 that you will be doing. And then I kind of have some information about how I'm pretty well rounded. Like I have done hardware, I've done analysis. All of these things, I have this phrase, making me well-rounded and capable of leading analysis projects for the above mentioned experiments. So I'm kind of saying that I would not, you know, not only am I able to do hardware stuff and deploying experiments and things like that, I can also do analysis. So like, you know, that just kind of makes sure that if they need someone for analysis versus deploying, well, I have it covered. I have all of that covered in my current experience. So I'm good to keep doing that in the future. So if you you know if you're well-rounded, you want to point out that you're well-rounded and then in the end you want to once again say how your research interests align with the opportunities at this fellowship. So I say something like my research interests align with multiple opportunities that could be supported by the Chamberlain Fellowship. And that is the big thing here. Like you're making the case that not only are you great, but your research interests align with this opportunity because you know it doesn't matter how big or small the opportunity if your research interests don't align with that opportunity then they're not gonna take you because you'll be unhappy and nobody wants an unhappy postdoc right so you really want to drive home the point that not only are you great you've d done all these things to prepare you for this next opportunity that there are several things at this next opportunity that, opportunity that you could contribute to but what you're wanting to do, your research interests align with those same opportunities that would be presented in this um, next fellowship or whatever this is. And then kind of I end with like, and that would also benefit from my background in particle astrophysics instrumentation and analysis work. Because that kind of again ties together how, yeah, this is what I want and I'm good at it. So this is this is the game of the research statement. You want to keep saying how this is what you want, and this is what I did to prepare me. This is what I want, and this is what I did to prepare me. This is, uh, you have things that I can contribute to. I have done blah, blah to help me get to the point where I would be a strong contributor and just kind of remind them that that's your interest. And there you go. There you have it. So that's the research statement for me. Um, it's not too long. 
Um, and, you know, I went through the paragraphs here in this podcast episode and feel free to check it out uh, on the blog itself uh, at howtophd.org. And I uh, wish you all the best with writing your own research statement. And I hope that this template helps you uh, to get that done and kind of streamlines your effort so that you don't have to think about and worry about what you're going to write and um, do for all these applications. And um, yeah, and please, you know, if you want to subscribe to this podcast or the website, howtophd.org, then I will let you know when my next book, which is all about how to get your dream postdoc, comes out and is available for free so that you can grab a ebook copy of that at your convenience. So thank you so much. And